What's occurring? Hello, my name's Charlotte and I'm Charlotte from Wild Magic Yarns based in Wales in the UK. I thought I'd do a little podcast just to show you what I've been up to and what I am up to. So, I had planned to do a proper podcast today where I was sat somewhere, I had everything next to me and that would actually have my face in it. Turns out that my back has gone and I can't walk, which is brilliant. My wheelchair is also broken in bits in the shed. Um, my husband is going to have a look at it later for me. So for now, <laughs> I'm stuck and I can't walk and I'm in a lot of pain, which sucks. But it's fine, I can still show you everything I was intending on showing you um, just in front of me rather than having to look at my face. Uh, so hopefully it will work, hopefully you won't mind too much and uh, we'll get started. Right, I am done. Romeo done. This is my first and only FO so far of 2024. It's neither crochet or knitting or dyeing or spinning but it is sewing. So this is my ugly <laughs> iPad bean bag. Um, ugly because I just used random fabrics I had left over from Christmas and a tea towel. Um, I just wanted to see if it would work before I use nice fabrics on it, but I'm really happy with it, it works. So yeah, my iPad keeps falling over in bed while I'm trying to read patterns on it. Um, I just needed something squishy to prop it up and it does the job. I love it. It's great. I probably will make another one at some point because the fabric is Christmassy. But for now, for now it's great. Um, haven't finished anything else yet. We will get there. You'll have to excuse my nails as well. I did these on Boxing Day. Gel nails. And you can see the regrowth. They've only just started chipping. That one came off yesterday. But I've run out of acetone to take the others off. And I don't want to just peel them off because that will peel my nails off as well. Um, so unfortunately, I have chipped damaged nails. Those they aren't damaged. They're just a lot of regrowth. So sorry for my uh, messy hands today. And yeah. Oh, <laughs> when I was making this, by the way, I did not anticipate how difficult it would be <laughs> to get the beans into the bag. So I I made, I left, a tiny hole here. It looks quite big there, but it wasn't. It was just big enough to get a toilet tube, toilet roll tube into. And <laughs> I... Um, I tried numerous different ways to get the beans in, but every time I touched the plastic bag that the beans came in, they flew everywhere. And because I had my fan on as, as well, they were just, it was like a snowstorm and they were going into the back of my fan, coming out and hitting me in the face. Um, it, it was quite ridiculous. There were more beans on the floor than there were in here. Um, in the end, my husband made a cardboard funnel, which I then used to, like, I used a mug to pour the beans into the funnel. And it it, it worked better than the other ways we try, but um, still, still not amazing. So that was interesting and not sure how I would do that again in future. Not sure if, if I'm going to bother making a new one, actually, thinking about what a mess that made um yeah bit of entertainment for a for a saturday evening that was and my husband walked in the room took one look walked back out again <laughs> oh dear oh well hetty hoover dealt with them so that is uh that is that for my finished object love i'll take all of this all right but i don't need another whip so let's do some whips. The background I'm using today is my granny stripe blanket. And this was the Nora George Harry Potter yarn club. 
But Blythe, as soon as I start filming, he decides to use that exact moment to bite his sister. Right. Um, whips. I've... Oh. Blythe? Blythe, you're licking my phone again. Blythe, you're licking my phone. You're blind. <laughs> Why are you like this? <laughs> I'm going to start again with the whips. So, I have... Because there's just so much noise going on today. You can't do anything. I have started a year-long project. It's not knitting or crochet. It is embroidery. Um, I've seen these before where you do an embroidery a day for every single day of the year and they're like in wedges but I think that's a bit much for me to start with so I have found this pattern on Instagram and you do one embroidery a week of the year so there's 52 and they all go inside those little circles the circles are um, done in friction pen so they're erasable so they will disappear so it will just be coloured embroidery at the end of the year um, but they're there to show you where to put your embroideries so the ones with the I've put little dots at the top of January's and so far for the first week of January we had nothing but rain so I've done a rain cloud in French knots with some uh, sparkly raindrops. The second week of January was Blythe's first birthday. So I've done a tiny little party hat with a one on it and the tiniest pom-pom ever. Like, that's my little finger. It is so small. So I'm hoping I can keep up with this. My life is quite boring, so I have no idea what I'm going to fill them with. Um... I don't just want to end up with them being weather all the time. I'm sure I'll find something. I'm sure I'll find something. And then I'm hoping at the end of the year then, um, I will have a nice memento of 2024. And I thought, I do, I've always wanted to do a year long project. I'm not really into temperature blankets. So I thought this one would uh, would be a bit more manageable. So that is my first whip. And that's going to take all year. My next whip um, is still in this bag. Robins aren't just for Christmas though, are they? Neither are snowflakes. So I was going to say this is a winter season bag rather than a Christmas one. It's from Candy Skull Crafts. And also on here I have a lovely bag charm from Green Lambkin Yarns. Very cute. He is Christmassy, but we'll, we'll leave him on there. So, um, this is my Christmas Eve cast on. I didn't actually cast on on Christmas Eve um, because I was finishing my Advent socks. No, 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 no. That is last year's Christmas Eve cast on. We'll ignore that. Where's the shoes gone then? Have they already got them? Uh, I don't know where the other one is. How very strange. Well, anyway, the, this is the Christmas Eve cast on set <coughs> from Giddy Yarns, and it is based on the snowman. So as you can see, you've got the lovely green there. And then this is the main colour. It's perfect, isn't it, for the snowman? It's got a bit of sparkle to it as well. And then I just wanted to add a bit of interest into these socks. So instead of just doing the rib, I've gone down a little way and I've used my own hand-dyed leftover um, to do a row of snowflakes. And I thought I'd use this colour because I was looking at images of the snowman and it's the colour of the little boy's dressing gown. So... I'm hoping that because there are some flecks of orange in the main colour, I'm hoping that that will tie in nicely. And the other sock, 
I'm just looking around the room and I can't see it. It'll be here somewhere. Um, the other sock, I've done a little bit more of the main colour so you can see how nicely um, it goes together. So I'm knitting both of these on separate nine inch circulars. And I am using these amazing handmade stitch markers from Adventures in Yarncraft. They're so tiny. Yeah, so I'm hoping that, well, I'll show you my big whip in a second. Um, so I hope no one's listening to me. I'll show you my big whip. They might think I'm doing uh, an extra job on the side to make some money. But uh, yeah, because I'm uh, working on a large project at the moment, um, I haven't had much time to spend on the socks. But now the colour work bit's done. It's just simple sock knitting, really. Um, I might actually put another row of snowflakes around the bottom of the sock, where the toe is as well, um, just to break that up a bit. I might even do the heels in the brown because I don't think I've got enough of the green because I've gone down from the ribbing a little bit and I probably will do the same with the toe. I don't think I'll have enough for two heels as well, so I'll probably do brown heels. But I'm looking forward to seeing how they come out and I'm going to have to go on a hunt for the missing sock uh, when I finished recording this. So I am going to now show you my final whip. And here it is. So this is the Glittering Snowscape Shawl by Stephen West. And it is the 2020 three stroke four Hiber Knit Along that he does every year um it starts on boxing day don't know when it finishes um i didn't actually start mine on boxing day i started mine i think on the 1st of january maybe a bit before but here it is so far so you can't really see you can just about see the sparkle there it is so sparkly in real life when the light catches it it really does um look like glittering snow so started in undyed and then i dyed an undyed with just a little bit of pale blue and some darker blue speckles for the second color then the third color i went um to a bit of a brighter blue the same color that i did the speckles in then the fourth colour, I wanted to move a bit more towards navy. So I used some of this blue and some navy blue. And I left it quite, with quite a lot of undyed bits in there too. Did some navy speckles. And then the fifth colour is the border colour. Um, which is this navy. But the border goes in stripes all the way along the edge of the shawl and then it uses the other colours in like a sequence so colour A, colour B, colour C just about to put colour D in I've got the colours here um, so So they're going to be integrated into the border. Um, I've really, really enjoyed knitting this. It is absolutely huge. You can't see how big it is because it's all bunched up on this circular needle. Um, the border, as you can see, well, I don't know if you can quite get the scale of it. The border I've just started last night and I've done that much of the edge of the shawl so maybe three or four inches so imagine doing that all the way along and it really is huge and it is so bunched up and it goes all the way across to the other end so yeah it's it's massive it's going to need a really good block when it's finished. But I've told myself I'm not allowed 
to either start anything new or continue to work on anything in progress until this is done. Mainly being because I just want it off the needles now <laughs> so I can wear it and enjoy it. Um, but also because I want it done before it snows so that if it does snow, I can take some lovely pictures of it in the snow. So the yarn I've used is fingering weight, 75% merino, 25% nylon. And it is my own hand dyed yarn. I'm really happy with the colours. Um, as I say, in real life, it looks a lot different because of the sparkle and you can sort of see the the pale blue more easily. You can kind of see it. Um, a lot of people have been having a little bit of a whinge about the pattern. Apparently, there's been difficulty with... Uh, this section, the arrowhead lace, and I didn't know that until I'd actually done it. Um, it was fine, it was absolutely fine. And then that section was really easy. I've seen a lot of complaints about this section. Um, so I was dreading getting to this mesh bit. I thought oh, it's gonna be awful. It was fine, as long as you Trust the pattern, follow the pattern. It was no problem at all. And there's even a little tutorial video for that bit. So, yeah, don't worry if you're knitting it and you are dreading the section. Honestly, it's fine. That section was nice and easy too. This last section, the granite lace section was nice and easy. So, I think it's a really easy knit. It looks complicated. There are lots of different sections. Loads of different pattern bits, but it's written really well. And there are videos for any tricky bits. And it was just a, a nice relaxing knit. Other than the fact that there's like 500 stitches now to do a, a thick border on. But there we go. I'm enjoying it. I love it. And when it's off the needles, I'm going to be really proud of it. Because not only have I made it, but I think it's... Other than socks, it's probably the first big project I've done in my own hand-dyed yarn. So yeah, I'm going to be proud of this one. So that is the Glittering Snowscape Shawl um, by Stephen West. And I think... No, I've got one more whip that I'm going to show you after this one. This is the last whip I'm going to show you. <laughs> This is the Yuletide Blanket by Attic24. Um, it's done in, it's crocheted in Stylecraft Special DK, which is acrylic yarn. And this is embarrassing, but it's been a whip for, I think this is the third year that I've worked on it. And every year I say, right, I'm gonna finish it this year. And then you notice like when you get to Christmas, and you're frantically gift knitting you're like oh i'll just do myself a pair of christmas socks as well and or oh, this person might like a little toft figure and etc and you just get bogged down in christmas stuff um so I, i've only managed to do i think i did that's rude Blythe. i think i did from the red there up to the orange um this year so I've promised myself as soon as the um, uh, Hibernate Along is finished, I'm going to like power ahead now with this and, and finish it because it needs to be done. And my husband said the other day, we need more Christmas blankets. I've only got one crocheted Christmas blanket that I've made. All of the others are just general blankets. Um, so he's keen for me to finish this one as well. And it is it's such a lovely blanket. It's beautiful. It's soft. Um, it's style craft, so it's going to wash really well. And it's got lovely festive colours. Um, but it doesn't have to be festive either. You know, it's one of those blankets that you can just put on your sofa and it looks 
lovely. So yeah, that is going to be um, my mission for after the high minute along is finished. And fingers crossed, I'm going to try and make myself get it done this year. This is the first year that I haven't actually participated in the Attic 24 crochet along, the one that happens in January, um, because I wanted to get this done and I thought I can't take on another blanket. Now I want to finish this. Um, if anyone is really into Attic 24, I own an Attic 24 Facebook group. It's called Just Attic 24 Friends. It's the only group on Facebook that is solely Attic 24. You won't see any other projects in there. Um, everything is Attic 24 related. So um, I think we've got six and a half thousand members from all over the world. And that's going up every day. I get at least 10 people joining. So, yeah, it's a nice group. There's never, ever any drama, despite there being that many members never drama um i think i've had one spam post ever in the three or four years that i've had the group going so um yeah if, if you like attic 24 i'd encourage you to come and have a look at the group because it's worth doing there's a lot of lovely people helpful advice pictures um progress on people's crochet alongs etc yeah so that is that and let's move on to acquisitions. Oh, the drama, Mick! I just love it! So this yarn um, is by Dystopic Fibre. This is the only yarn I have bought so far this year. Um, now, I'm not going to be one of those people who says, I'm not going to buy any yarn now. I'm going to use all my stash um, this year because... A lot of small yarn dyeing businesses rely on people like me who love to buy yarn. And if I don't buy yarn, then I'm not supporting these businesses. Um, that might sound strange to some, but, you know, I, I've started dyeing yarn as well. And... It's so appreciated when somebody buys some of my yarn. And also, some indie yarn dyers, it's their full-time job. And that that's how they make their living. So I don't want to take away what I would usually spend on a yarn because I'm going to knit from stash. Because let's face it, I'm not, am I? You know, I've got loads of stash. And yes, I, I do dip into it for projects when I need to. But... If you see yarn that you love, then you're going to buy it. I am. And I saw this yarn on Boxing Day. Uh, it is called Quality Street. And it is so lovely. Look at that. I had to have it. And I thought, wow, you know, it's not even the new year yet and I'm already buying yarn. Well, good. Because it makes me happy. And that's all that matters. And I'd already had the Dystopic Fibre Advent. So I was so impressed with how amazing the fade is. Like I've, I've said before, it's literally a work of art. Um, I wanted this yarn. So I bought it. And it's beautiful. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Probably socks because it's got the contrast colour. Um, it's just lush. I love it. The colours in that, look. Mm, very pretty. Oh, isn't it exciting? <laughs> Other than that, I have joined two yarn clubs. Um, the first one is by Spectrum Fibre. And I'll put a little picture in now of the yarn club. can't remember off the top of my head what it's called, but I'll put it here when I'm speaking about it it's something like tropical neons um I've never really been a neon person up until recently and a friend of mine a ripping yarn on Instagram she loves her neons and every time I see her yarn I'm like well I I like that I want that I need it <laughs> so 
this year we have both signed up for the Spectrum Fibre Young Club and we've both gone for minis. I've gone for DK because I'm going to make a granny square blanket. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is going. And I think she's gone for sock. Um, yeah, so we're both really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be some bright colour, especially through, you know, these months now before spring kicks in. And uh, I've also joined the Dystopic Fibre Young Club for this year. And again, I'll put a little picture up now of what the Young Club is based on. I, I wasn't going to sign up to two Young Clubs. But I just couldn't resist. And because they're both offering minis, um, it makes the price more reasonable than if I was ordering like two young clubs of full sock sets or full 100 gram skeins. So I, this, um, the dystopic fiber young club is based on potions. And for anyone who knows me, that is so me, like it could not be more me. So, and I think it's going to be a contrast as well to the other young club. Um, because I think dystopic fibre yarn is always like beautifully moody and not always dark, but just amazingly thought out colours. And whereas the other one is going to be bright, neon, summer, happy. And then you've got the contrast then with potions and a bit magic and mystical and I just love the idea. Um, Not sure what I'm going to do with that yarn club yet. I've gone for minis, sock minis in gold Stellina. Um, I might do as John from Dystopic Fibre suggested and get non-sparkle every other month and then sparkle every other month. And I'm thinking I might try and maybe design a blanket that looks like shelves that I can put the potion potions on I don't know I've got something in my head I don't know if it'll work um maybe it will maybe it won't I'll have to have a good think about that but I think it needs to be some sort of blanket definitely um that will really showcase the yarn so yeah, that's going to be interesting. I'm hoping that with the Spectrum Fibre one, because it's DK, when I get the yarns, I can just really quickly knock out granny squares from them. And then at the end, then I will like border them and get them all together into a blanket. Sounds achievable. Sounds manageable. Um. Ooh. I also want to mention as well, um, I'm going to put it up on the screen. So this year, Giddy Yarns, Helen from Giddy Yarns, has created a bingo board for knitters, crocheters, crafters of any kind. There are different ones you can choose from. And what you do is you download uh, the bingo board you wish to use. Um, you can get them on Giddy Yarns YouTube or I think she's now put up a link on her Instagram. So you can download from there as well. And then you fill in uh, each of the bingo squares for projects that you want to achieve in 2024. Um, and then when you look at them, you cross them off when you've completed them. And I, I think there's some sort of giveaway, like a prize. I'm not sure. I'll have to check on that. But um, I mean, the whole idea of it is brilliant. And it, if there isn't a giveaway, I can't remember if there is one. It doesn't matter because look at what you will have achieved in a year. Um, so my bingo board. So this is my bingo board. And I've got finished three advent projects. Um, 
I did finish my advent socks, but I finished them on New Year's Eve, so I can't really count that. So, yeah, three advent projects. Learn brioche knitting. That is something I've been knitting for 36 years now, and I've never tried brioche knitting. Some people love it, some people hate it. This is going to be the year where I try. Then make a garment. I made two garments last year. Um, I would like to make myself some sort of cardigan. Don't know if knit or crochet yet. I, I'll have to have a look at patterns and things. Haven't decided. But that is... My goal is to make one garment this year. Uh, finish one attic 24 blanket. I'm hoping it will be this one. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I do also have three other attic 24 blankets in progress. As well... No, four. As well as two others I haven't started. I've got a lot of blankets to crochet. Um, so yeah, one of them will be getting done this year. Then I've got organise and structure my whips. I've got so many whips in bags and in random places. I need to get them all together, see what I've got to do and actually get finishing them. Um, like I'm doing with the ones I'm doing now, not let myself start anything new until I'm done. But sometimes you just need that thing of starting something new, don't you? So at least I'll be organised though and I can see what I've got. Um, then spin my own hand dyed fibre. So I've spun other people's fibre this year. I would like to spin something I've dyed myself. Knit 10 pairs of socks. Might be a bit ambitious. I don't know. I mean, usually I churn out quite a lot of socks a year. So I'm thinking 10. It's one, a, well, it's less than one a month. So possibly achievable. Uh, knit five toft characters. Of course, I don't mean knit, I mean crochet. Because toft characters are made from crochet. And five I need to make. I've got a beaded Christmas elf here to make. I've got uh, the red kite. I've got Bryony the whale shark. I've got two three flowers i think to make three of the big flowers so yeah i've got enough to do that without having to buy any more um and then the last one try lino printing so i did lino printing back in school for my gcse art which was a very very long time ago and it's always been something that i've wanted to do again i love the way the prints come out especially when they're like birds or wildlife that type of print so my mum bought me a kit last Christmas and oh, or maybe it was for my birthday can't remember either way I haven't opened it yet and I really really want to and then I always get um caught up in doing other things so this year I'm definitely, definitely going to get out this kit and do some lino cutting and printing. And I will share with you the process, hopefully. I will probably end up bleeding at some point, um, as is what usually happens when I attempt things with sharp tools. But uh, it's all fun, isn't it? It's all part of it. So that is my last square on my bingo board. And we'll see how we do throughout the year. Open it now, this second. Give yourself a little treat. So, shop news. Um, haven't dyed any yarn for a while. Not since I dyed my yarn for the hibernate along. I'm hoping to do some Easter yarn. And I'm not sure after that, but I am doing an advent this year. And I'm so excited about it. Think childhood christmas 60s 70s 80s 90s what were your favorite things about christmas um things like the pop van mr frosty uh tinsel you know all the things that we had as children that we appreciated that probably wouldn't be 
amazing now. Um, but they were just Christmas. A tangerine in the toe of your stocking. Um, I can't think of, it, of other things off the top of my head now, all the ideas I've got. But it's all planned. I haven't done any of the artwork for it yet. Um, but it's going to be good. It's going to be in a reusable wooden advent calendar, which I'm really pleased with. It even lights up. And there are going to be extras. There's going to be a stitch marker every day. There's going to be somewhere to put those stitch markers. And then there are going to be 20 gram minis of yarn every day. It won't be a fade. It's going to be colourful. It's going to be bright. It's going to be happy. And hopefully it will bring back some really lovely Christmas memories. So um, I'll just play you the little reel that I've made for my advent. So as you can see from that little clip, we've got a Woolworths bag, we've got the Argos catalogue, we've got Teddy Ruxpin. What could be better? These calendars will probably go on sale next month. Um, I'm thinking of doing a pay in for option as well as pay in full, um, just so it's a bit more affordable and... Um, I'm really hoping that you love it. I'm only going to be making 12. Two of those have already been reserved. So there are only going to be 10 available. Um, so hopefully, if you really want one, you'll be able to get one. I will keep you posted as to when I'll be putting them up for sale. And uh, I'm just so excited. I've never done an advent before. I can't wait. Can't wait. Right, I am going to sign off for today. Blythe is absolutely desperate, leave, for me to throw his robin for him. Aren't you? Go on in. Um, I'm going to go and watch the Pottery Throwdown. Now, does anyone else watch that? Like, I've watched it since the start, and it's been one of my most favourite of that type of show, you know, Big Off and the jewellery one I quite like, the wooden one on Channel 4 I watch, I watch a sewing bee, I love all the crafting type shows, um, but I think Pottery Throwdown is up there with Big Off for me, brilliant. So I'm going to go and watch that now, I watched last week's, need to watch yesterday's, and it's my day off today by the way, I'm not just randomly watching tv while i'm at work um we'll get this uploaded and i'm gonna carry on with my hybrid knit along shawl and hopefully get a chunk of the border done this afternoon okay thank you very much for watching if you haven't already i would love it if you subscribed um i only have 45 subscribers at the moment and i know some people have got thousands i just don't know how they do it probably uploading better content than I do <laughs> but we live within our means you know I I can't um do all the fancy videoing and everything because I'm mostly stuck in bed so unfortunately I am what I am and uh what you see is what you get so <laughs> I wish I could flip the cam oh can I flip the camera oh I can hello <laughs> Blythe do you want me to throw your toy? Would you like me to throw that for you? Sorry, just cut myself off there. Talking to the dog, um, such is life. I spend a lot of time talking to the dog. Oh, he's brought me... <laughs> leave, leave. He's brought me another toy now. This is one of his birthday toys. You might know Siobhan's Crafts on Instagram. She also makes dog toys. They are amazing 
they are Bly's absolute favourite dog toys in the entire universe. He's got, gosh, I think he's got about eight of them now, maybe more. And they are the ones he chooses constantly, every day. Most of the day I wake up and he stood over me with one of these toys in his mouth, waiting for me to play with him. He's trying... He's trying to rip this one out of my hand right now. There you go. We've also... No, Blythe. We've also taught him the command whip it. Blythe, whip it. <laughs> Which I regret doing. But, you know, it makes him happy. Um, <laughs> we've actually taught him whip it real good. Whip it real good. <laughs> yeah, you're cute, aren't you? Um... But that means that he can be quite lethal with a toy. Especially, he's got ones with like hard balls on the end. And if he whips those into you, they can do some damage. So anyway, um, enough about Blythe. Even though he's an ever-present force in my life. I am going to sign off now. Um, and do my hibernate along and watch pottery throw down. So enjoy the rest of your day and hopefully I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.